I have played around with the Foros auxiliary ships a little bit off camera just to learn how the ships work and I can tell you the Foros auxiliary ships are definitely very interesting. I really do enjoy flying them, makes me recall the good old days in other games that I used to play where I was the healer. Well, perhaps I will be a healer in this game as well, we will see. I have high interest in a couple of the ships. I really hope that the faction force auxiliaries come to the game at one point. Now today I'll be playing around with the Minokawa and let's take a look at the trait description. Now the role bonus on the ships is mostly the same. You get until the sneak activation time, command burst range, you can fit main weapons and they can operate super heavy logistic drones. Overall, really solid. Advanced logistic drone operation bonus will give you plus 40% drone shield boost, 10% drone effective hit points, plus 20 kilometers drone command range. Advanced force auxiliary command bonus will give you plus 4% shield resistance, plus 10% remote shield boost amount, minus 10% remote shield boost amount capacitor need. And the last one, advanced carry command bonus will give you plus 6% shield command burst strength and plus 3% skirmish command burst strength. Overall, very similar to the Apostle. Uh, overall, uh, very solid looking stats on the Minokawa. Now onto the attributes and fitting. Four drones, six high slots, four medium slots, seven low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs. Also very small cargo call capacity. Dual fuel tanks, which is very interesting, decent fuel capacity, 877,000 hit points, which is a little bit less than the Apostle. The Minokawa is a shield tank, and please don't attempt to armor tank a Minokawa, that's very cursed and not going to work. Decent capacitors, 1,920 seconds recharge time, 83.01 gigajoule per second is the recharge rate. It can knock 7 targets, signature radius 8.9 kilometers, scan resolution 55 meters, 75 meters per second is the flight velocity, 1.5 astronomic units per second is the warp speed. 9, 8.9 kilometer signature radius, this thing is huge. A little bit larger than the Apostle, which is also a very interesting little fact. Now, the Minokawa has a whopping 0 DPS, which uh, equals the DPS on the Apostle. The capital remote shield boosters repair 8531 every 10 seconds, optimal range 15.41, accurate fall of 16.68 kilometers, which is quite the short range, which is a characteristic for the force auxiliary ships. And they do use quite a bit of capacitor, 2400 gigajoule per activation. That means the capacitor will be a little bit problematic uh, on this ship. Now I have one shield command burst, they have a 90 km range, shield boost capacity minus 10.12%, remote shield boost capacity minus 10.12%, shield extra 14.45%, shield resistance plus 11.81%. And the duration of the cycle is 60 seconds. Overall, really solid stats. And the skirmish command also has a 90 km range. And the stats on the skirmish command equal the stats of the skirmish command on the other force auxiliaries because they all have basically the same effect. And this is very, very helpful uh, if you are in a fleet, also helps your own ship. Now I have one web and one scrambler, but you can fit any other module that you like. Micro Super Heavy Shield Maintenance Drone. We have Micro and Super Heavy in the same line, which, which is a very, very interesting, but... The Shield Maintenance Drones do repair a nice amount of shield, 3745 every 10 seconds, and they also have a very short range, but uh, command range 135 kilometers, which is pretty solid. And they seem to be a little bit slower than the armor maintenance drones, but overall the speed is generally the same. In the low slots, triple adaptives, dual batteries and dual shield boosters. Now I don't really think that this build might work really well, because shield boosters do eat a lot more capacitor than armor repairs. Now as for the 
rigs. I have dual integrations for P combat integration modules and they're focused on shield resistance and shield boost amount per cycle. Now I think that I could easily replace the shield boost amount rig into a rig that will save capacitor upon shield activation and this is what I placed uh, in the third slot on the combat rigs but so far this setup seems to be looking really nice and I really like it. This is the normal rig that I have, minus 20% capacitor need on the shield boosters it should help with the capacitor a little bit. And in the, in the engineering rigs I have capacitor rigs to help out with the capacitor heavy modules. Now they boost 25,000 every 7.7 seconds and they cost 3,196 usual per activation, which is honestly uh, quite a bit of activation cost. 52, 65, 61 and 60% resistance on the shield. The capacitor lasts 1 minute and 10 seconds, which is a significant difference if we compare it with the Apostle, which has I think 2 minutes and 50 seconds with a build similar to this. So capacitor batteries will be very important on the Minokawa. And I like how every new capacitor battery adds like 10 seconds on the on the capacitor duration. That is because the shield boosters and remote shield boosters do eat a lot of capacitor and they also have a much much faster activation time. 21 seconds on the armor pairs, 7.7 .7 seconds on the shield boosters, which is a big difference in energy usage. Okay, now here you can take a look at this beautiful ship. The Force Auxiliaries have a very, very nice design and overall they have highly detailed ship models. So as usual, I'll make sure to upload this in 4K so that you can enjoy the beauty of these monsters. These ships are really, really huge. Not really sure how the hell this, this fits in this little station, but but okay, I'm not going to complain. So let's take a look at the active stats of this beast. Now I have everything active. Let me enter the maintenance mode or logistic support mode, but uh, maintenance mode also works. It's the exact same logistic support mode as on the Apostle, so there is no difference on that. And now let's see how quickly this capacitor with this build will die. I'm pretty sure the capacitor will not live long with the current build, but we will see. Let's take a look at the active stats. 5.1 million hit points, 686, 19, and 89% resistance. Pretty tanky. 1 minute and 32 seconds is the capacitor. And everything else is roughly the same. Well then, uh, which implants are the best to use on the Minokawa? Well, of course, the remote shield implants. Now, they are quite interesting uh, because the primary skill will actually reduce the capacitor usage of the remote shield boosters up to 100%. So that basically means that you can run the remote shield boosters for free for around 20 seconds. And that is quite, quite strong, honestly. At the level 15, you can get extra capacitor recharge when the remote boosters are not active. Or you can get this one, which does repair your own shield. 15% 15 of actual recharge amount, which again is like a small shield booster working. At level 30, you Morning. can get the activation delay for remote shield activation to be reduced to 90 seconds. And you have enduring EPS, which does extend the activation time for 30 seconds. And the last level 45 bonus, it increases energy usage by 500%, but at the same time it improves repair by 500%. So you can fully charge a Phoenix in roughly one cycle. And as for the general units, 
I usually keep the same units for my logistic ships. Basically, maximum repair mouth, maximum capacitor performance, although I have to replace one of these units because they kind of cancel each other out. So that I had so that I get the maximum effect on the on the capacitor batteries in order to improve the capacitor runtime on the ship. Because again, the remote shield boosters do eat a lot of capacitor. Now let me show you the implant in action. So I have activated the primary stat and well where is the activation cost? It's gone. It uses exactly zero cap to run the remote boosters once the primary stat of the implant is active and that is really interesting as you can see it doesn't use capacitor at all even though the capacitor is empty which is interesting okay now let's activate another capacitor battery and with the next cycle the capacitor should be getting depleted we will see if that happens Yes, it happens. Uh, okay. And with the level 45 skill active, now the capacitor should be pretty empty in two cycles because, yeah, there we go. Capacitor empty. Only two cycles with the capacitor batteries. Which, again, is, uh, I would say, very, very strong. Look at how much it repairs. Six, 76,000 every 10 seconds per shield, per remote shield booster, you can fully charge a dreadnought in one cycle. And also, one fun fact, you can use both skills of the implant at the same time, which means you can fully charge a dreadnought and still have capacity left for perhaps to fully recharge another dreadnought. And that is also one of the ways how you can use the implant on the ship. Very smart and honestly very interesting. Now the maintenance drones also get a very nice boost from the logistic support mode as well as the remote shield boosters, 12,000 once you enter the maintenance mode on the ship. Okay, let's dock and let me tweak the build a little bit so uh, that I get some form of capacitor Docking stability request on this accepted. thing, although I kind of like that previous build. Okay, so I have quad capacitor batteries now, although five capacitor batteries might also be a smart choice on this thing because it does eat a lot of capacitor to operate the capital remote boosters. So. Let's see the active stats, 4.2 million, the tank is now a little bit lower. The shield boosters don't get the same resistance bonus as the armor repairs with the implant, so that's one big difference, but the boosters repair a lot of shield, which is a compensation for the lack of resistance. All right, now the implant the first primary attribute is active, and as you can see, it takes no capacitor. Let's boot up the secondary attribute, and now you repair 76,000 for zero capacitor usage for roughly around 20 seconds. And that is honestly enough to fully recharge a tank, a shield tank, dreadnought, and perhaps in the future to almost fully recharge a Titan or supercarrier, of course a shield tank supercarrier or shield tank Titan, like the like the Ragnarok or the Kaladiri one. The Ragnarok is the Mimatar Titan, while the Kaladiri one, what was it called? Leviathan, yeah, it was the Leviathan. Okay, well, uh, overall, pretty sick shield boost stats on this monster. The best shield boost stats that I've seen so far and we still have two more force auxiliary ships to to fly. Well, it's definitely going to be very very fun to to see which one would perform the best, although I believe that every one of these ships has uh, its own role and purpose on the battlefield, so 
on the right situation, there'll, there'll be a right force auxiliary ship. Well, the capacitor now is definitely in a better shape than before. Much, much more stable than with the previous build, and it should last for a very long time. In a fleet, you will have the other logistic ships to supply you with capacitors, so the capacitor in the end, in a big fleet, is not really a big problem, although uh, for a small fleet, it might be uh, an, an issue, but you can low. solve that with the quad capacitor batteries here. Okay, let's turn on both implants at the same time now. I mean both stats at the same time, both skills. And let's see if... I mean, yeah, of course, I knew that this would happen. I already tested it out, but just to test it again, 76,000 76, every 10 seconds for zero capacitor. We can run this in such a way that it is capacitor stable and you can time the activations so that you have capacitor batteries kick in when the, when the effect of the implants stops working. And now the ship is running at capacitor batteries again and I have almost all four of them ready to be cycled through. Well then, I'm very happy with this build and with uh, this outcome should be really helpful uh, in a big fleet. These things are, are not easy to kill. If you have the right build, these monsters are tanky as dreadnoughts, so even tankier than dreadnoughts. Docking request accepted. Have seen that with the Apostle in the last video. Okay, now this is a build that you could use if you participate in a large fleet, maximum possible shield resistance, and here you rely on your teammates and on your own drones to repair your ship. The super heavy drones do repair your own ship once you have no locked on target, and that is also a very nice little feature that these ships have. 87, 91, 92 and 90% 90 resistance. Well, this is pretty tanky. And also a lot of... That's a lot of hit points on this thing. Okay, let's boot up other modules. 6.1 million hit points, 89, 92, 93, 92% because of the Command Burst Shield module. Also really solid stats and with the Panic Mode, the damage control, the hit points are 25.8 million, 97, 98, 98, and 98% resistance. 574,000 shield hit points. This thing is a chunk. A pretty good chunk. I love it. Super tanky. And I can make it even tankier. Just wait for the, for the end of this video. I have, I have a little surprise, as I usually do. Well, this is a pretty tanky ship, and the tank does seem to be, not a tank, but the capacitor does seem to last very nicely. Okay. Docking Let request dock. accepted. And let's see, let's see the DPS of this thing with, with drones. Now, on the Apostle, we could see that we were not able to fit any capital weapons, we were not able to fit any missile launchers, lasers, autocannons, and stuff like that. But you can use combat drones on these things, and well, the DPS on the Apostle, let's say it's, it's nothing, it doesn't really uh, do much, it doesn't have any DPS little to no difference in uh, in zero DPS and with the drone DPS to be honest but as they say any DPS is uh, going to be helpful at at least one moment and at one point in the game so these ships are 
actually capable to defend themselves against intercept or tackle. They can defend themselves against the store tackle, glass cruiser tackle. And I think that's uh, that should be enough. However, tankier ships like tank cruisers, battle cruisers, battle ships, they would provide to be a problem uh, if they tackle a force auxiliary ship. But small ships should be careful if they go and tackle these things because if the pilot knows what they're doing, they will have drones. And if you have no tank, then even 100 DPS can kill you and it would allow uh, these ships to warp out. And all that is based on my personal combat experience. I know that I missed a lot of targets because my ship didn't have a tank so I had to warp out or I would die. That's how this game works. 205.74 DPS. You know, it's I would say it's okay for for large drones. They do some damage on that destroyer over there and I will let myself get tackled here. There is one interceptor approaching so I will let myself get tackled just to see if I am able to hit uh, that frigate. If I'm not able to hit that frigate, well, I will be in trouble. I'll be stuck here for a very long time and I don't want that to happen, but you know, have to test in order to make sure that the, the theory of what I'm saying here actually works. So this ship will be in web and sky Scramble range. I forgot that I had extended range because of We're this skirmish command. Scrambled. Don't forget that you have extended range on the webs and scramblers if you have the skirmish command module. I have been webbed and I have been scrambled. Lovely. So, if I'm not able to shoot down that frigate, I will be in some very, very deep you know what. So, Let's see if I messed up here. The, the destroyer is getting destroyed. As, as usual in this game. Now let's focus fire on the frigate. And yeah, I'm doing some damage. Web then scrambled, the frigate doesn't move much, so it will take Okay, it works. The tackle frigate is now into into low armor. They are repairing the frigate. Okay, that got me a little bit worried. Okay, that got me a little bit worried. And I am no longer scrambled and no longer wept okay so technically you should be safe against small ships but i would say still don't get scrambled by anything always maintain distance never fly th this ship solo it's not a combat ship it's definitely not a combat ship and unfortunately or should i say luckily we can't make a combat force auxiliary like we can do with the combat logistic ships would be ridiculous if we could make a combat force auxiliary ship you would see these things everywhere not really sure how many of these ships are currently in the game i'm still convinced Warp that drive i'm actually well, not convinced but uh, i'm fairly sure that no force auxiliary has seen combat yet they are still pretty fresh ships and they are still being actively produced. People still are actively skilling for these things. Might take a while before, might be actually a couple, couple weeks before we uh, see the first Force Auxiliary in battle. Or perhaps I'm wrong and perhaps they are already being used in, in combat. Again, you tell me that in the comments because I am not a... Uh, I don't participate in big fights that often. We are pirates. 
We don't do large scale fights with capital ships. Okay, let me let me just double check my theory out. Can you fit the Ritz? No, you can't. No large weapons, no capital weapons, no medium weapons, no small weapons. Which means you are stuck with only the remote shield boosters. Which is fine, honestly. These things are, after all, logistic ships, not combat ships. Well then, uh, time for the... Time for the fun part. Have you ever seen a... I don't know... A wreck of these ships? I know, I know I haven't. These, they're new ships, they're new ships, so... Maybe we'll be time to find out how much they last against a gate gun. You know the ship is tanky when I have to use a gate gun for a tank test. Okay, let's boot up everything that I have to boot up, just to show the stats. 29.9 million! Wow. Well, this is a brick. 98... 99% resistance. Nice. This is lovely. Okay, well, uh, let me warp to the planet first, to go away from the station just to have a good view on the on the big explosion as i said before big ships make big pretty explosions i don't care if it's my ship or someone else's ship but if they explode i sure will enjoy the fireworks and we're about to see how the wreck of this thing looks warp drive active some final And looks on this ship. Let's go to the to the station my apologies I got a little bit distracted we had a case of friendly fire on the gate so I had to make them stop fight or we would have a lot of a lot of very dead faction ships okay I think I okay I saved my friends good okay now I can go back to the video here all right, so I took a couple screenshots of this Warp thing drive active. because, well, uh, I need a thumbnail. Let's go to the... Well, this thing warped fast, okay. Surprisingly fast. Let me lock on the gate gun. Skirmish and the shield thingy has been activated. It will take a while to lock on the gate gun. 29.38 seconds. Okay, drones are out. I got aggro. Damage control active. Well, they're scratching the surface of my shields, that's for sure. This thing is a brick. This is a very tanky ship. It lived... It did live a long... Okay, it, it, this was actually hilarious. The longest time the gate guns took something to kill right here. It outlasted even the Apostle, I believe. And this is a big, pretty explosion. Nice fireworks for the finale for today's video. <laughs> I love to do this. Well then. That was a Minokawa, now it's a wreck. A big lovely explosion, let's take a look at the... Let's take a look at the... 
the wreck up close. I like how they have made these wrecks still appear intact, mostly. And I think this might be the first Minokawa wreck that's been recorded. Again, a little bit hilarious, but this is how the wreck of this thing works. It looks. How the hell does a wreck work? What am I talking? I'm getting a little bit sleepy here, my apologies. Let's take a look at the kill, I mean at the loss. So the apostle was 89 billion. This is 83 billion, almost 84 billion. Well, not bad. It's not... Surprisingly not as expensive as I thought that it'd be. Very interesting. Oh well. It did last quite a while against the gate guns. Which is hilarious. Usually the gate guns pop your ship, but these things do live against them quite a while. Alright, well, that was a very nice little ride with the Minokawa. And with that being said, hope that you guys enjoyed. Stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.